Hi there, welcome to Flonigan Books. Today I wanted to talk about garment care and how I like to take care of my wardrobe so I can get the most use out of it. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. Today I'm filming a video because this afternoon, once I'm done filming my videos, I am going to try and attempt in the, for the first time in a very long time to shorten a pair of pants that I just recently bought. I had a couple of pairs of pants shortened by my mom over the winter time, but that was mainly because they were thicker fabrics and they were like pretty expensive trousers that I didn't want to ruin. And because this isn't something I do all the time, I'm not much of a sewer. Um, I was like, you know what? I want to attempt it with this pair of like lightweight cotton trousers that I have from Monkey. But because I had planned to do this this weekend, I was like, you know what? I should do a video all about how I like to take care of my clothes and that I, you know, that I can get the most use out of it as well, because I definitely have quite a bit of vintage clothing by now. I've also invested in slightly more expensive brands as well in the past couple of years where I've just tried to buy nicer quality clothing that I therefore hope will last me a long time. But without taking care of your clothes properly, that's never going to go, no matter how expensive the item is that you're going to buy. So that's why I thought we could do a quick little video where I share with you my tips to get the most wear out of your wardrobe by making sure it can stay in your wardrobe for as long as possible. Another reason why I feel this is a very important topic to talk about is because I definitely feel also like people around me and a lot of people I know who are my age do not tend to have the skills to mend clothes and they don't go into the effort of trying to alter things or maybe make things work for them. So rather than just buying something new, rather than mending it, they will just throw it away and buy something new instead. And I've definitely have things in my wardrobe that I've had for more than a decade that I hold very near and dear to my heart. And then I, I always ask myself, is this something that, you know, I can see myself wearing for the long run. And whenever I do my declutters, that's also what goes into it. I have definitely invested in my wardrobe over time. And there are certain pieces that I just know I can get the use out of for the next 10, 20 years to come, provided I take care of it. So I just wanted to share my tips, how I try to get the most wear out of my clothing and how I even have fast fashion H&M and Zara pieces in my wardrobe that I've had for a decade or more that are still going strong. First things first, I think the most basic element of garment care is how you wash and dry your clothing. So I live by myself, so I have a lot of clothing, which everybody always comments on, also my colleagues and people who know me in real life. But one of the reasons why I have so much clothing isn't just because I enjoy clothing and I have a lot and I wanna have a lot, it's also because I'm a single person household and in order to be able to do a full load of laundry, I need to save up my clothing for like two to three, three weeks really before I can have full loads of laundry. Um, and having full loads of laundry is going to protect your clothing from the tumbling around in the washing machine. And it's, it means your clothing will not shed as many fibers when you're washing it. So only like if you just have like three white t-shirts and you feel like they're too dirty and you chuck those in the wash by themselves, they're going to have a rougher time in your washing machine than when you're able to combine them with other things. Another thing you need to be very careful with with washing your clothes is that you do up zippers and that you also make sure you turn certain items inside out. A t-shirt with a print on it that's not sewn onto it, like not it's not embroidery, but it's like a print that's like stuck onto it. If you turn your t-shirt inside out when you wash it, it's going to last a longer time. The same thing with jeans. If you want to keep the wash of your jeans looking as fresh as when you first purchase it, especially for darker pairs of denim, make sure you turn your jeans inside out. When you wash them, I tend to wear my jeans for at least a week. So they get like seven to 10 wears before I ever even chuck them into the washing machine. My battery cut out, so I don't know exactly where I was left off, but I think I was talking about jeans and that when I wash them, I like to turn them inside out. And I also don't 
uh, wash my jeans after every single wear. I think it's actually recommended for jeans to wash them every 10 wears or so. And that's certainly what I'm averaging. I tend to wear my jeans for like seven to 10 times, like for a good week or two before I actually decide to chuck them into the wash. Um, I also try to, when I wash my clothes, make sure I separate things by color. Um, I always do a darker colored wash and I do a lighter colored wash. And then if I have any delicates or like things that are white that I wanna make sure stay white, I tend to wash those kind of things separately. Um, but yeah, like I mentioned, I try to make sure I can do full loads of laundry. And then I also make sure to turn things inside out, do up zippers, do up buttons do all of that so that when it's in the machine, it doesn't get as much damage as it normally would. For my delicates, my uh, washing machine has a delicate cycle, so I don't tend to hand wash anything. What I do, however, is that when I use the delicate cycle, the items that go into that cycle go into a garment bag, so a delicate garment bag to again, protect it from it being tangled up into the machine and I don't use the tumble dryer when I do those things. I think tumble drying is the thing that can mess with your clothes the most. So I definitely will like, because my delicates program doesn't have tumble drying built into the program. So I will usually use a tumble dryer at like the lowest setting just to get most of the moisture out. And then I just air dry it because that's the second thing I think is really important why I think I get so much wear out of my clothing is because I've never owned a dryer in my life. I do live in the European Union. Our houses tend to be smaller. There are like washer dryer combos you can get. Um, and even nowadays they have dryers that don't need like a vent going outside. Um, so I could potentially have a dryer, but I've just always felt that I'm fine air drying my clothes. So winter or summer, I don't use a dryer. I never have. I always air dry my clothing. And I feel that that really, really helps with not having things look too creased. So I actually don't have to iron a lot of my clothing either because I tend to hang everything on a hanger that needs hanging like a blouse like I'm wearing today. When I wash it, I will already put it on the hanger that it goes on, like that I use to put it back into my wardrobe and let it air dry like that. And I feel that any creasing it might have from wearing it and whatever, especially if it can dry my clothing outside, it's mind bogglingly how easily it then just almost seems to iron any of the creases out without you having to actually use an iron. For the pieces in my clothing, in my wardrobe that do need an iron, I actually have a steamer rather than an iron. I'm just not really good at ironing. And I just have a steamer for the pieces that I really need to give a steam or give an iron. I usually do it the night before so they can dry a little bit because I feel whenever I steam clothing, there's always some of the moisture that will like drip onto the garment for all the creases to be gone. So it definitely works. I can definitely make it work. But yeah, that's uh, definitely how I tend to sort of like going about drying my clothing as well. Um, and another thing that I like to do because I have so much clothing, it may seem very unsustainable, but because I have so many clothing, they just don't wear as easily either. <laughs> so uh, that's definitely been something that like I've always had a slightly larger wardrobe. I remember when I first got like when I got my very first full time teaching job, I was like, I don't have any sweaters. Uh. So I had to go out and buy sweaters, which I then did. And therefore I have sort of built a wardrobe based on that experience where I have pieces in my wardrobe that I can wear year round. And because I tend to wear something like this, I will probably not use it again until like a few months down the line. But I tend to wear my clothing like two or three times a year tops, uh, like one single piece because I just have so much. But because I have so much, it means I don't have to wash it at all, as often. It can get stained or damaged as easily. So in that sense, having a larger wardrobe and trying to maintain that wardrobe, I think has been a way for me to really get the most use out of a, lo a lot of my clothing as well. Um, when it comes to like removing stains and all that, I just use a natural stain remover. Um, I do tend to use a bit of OxyClean for things that are like super duper stained, but very often just having the stain remover is just fine and it works on most garments I have found. So I do have that. Uh, I just like work it into the garment, 
pop it in the washing machine with the rest of my load of laundry and it comes out clean every single time. To get makeup stains out of like a wide shirt, I love using micellar water on a cotton round and just like rub it along the edge and it works every single time. It's also how I've cleaned like the colors of some of my jackets that I wear in the winter time because they're like all high up and snuggly and then they touch my face when I'm out and about, but definitely using micellar water on your like more delicate items that are perhaps a little bit more difficult to wash can work really, really well. Another thing that I love doing is like, especially in the summertime when it's a bit nicer weather, I will like air out all of my winter coats. I will just pop them outside on a nice sunny day and just have the wind do its work. And I feel that it really foregoes dry cleaning. I just don't have to dry clean my clothes that way. I just let the air do the talking, you could say. Um, I tend to like first hang them out like regularly and then I turn them inside out as well so that the entire garment has time to like air out and just have a nice sort of refresh that way. Um, so those are definitely ways in which I sort of take care of my clothing, but what if there's a hole or what if the button falls off or if a zipper is broken, whatever, I will get things fixed. I had a Primark coat that the zipper was faulty of, and I definitely had that zipper replaced until it truly started falling apart. And with Primark clothing, I just feel that works a little bit quicker. I also have a debobbler so I can debobble any of my like knitwear and also some of my wool coats if I feel they become a little scruffy looking. That's been a great investment as well. I have one of the fabric covered lint rollers. So you have a lint roller that has a sticky tape. Those I don't like. They are great for pet hair, but for like really sort of brushing up a garment, I've just invested in one that you can reuse. And when you brush it one way, it will take any of the dust and lint from a coat or jacket that you have, um, like any garment really. And then when you like wipe it the other way, you can wipe all of the dirt from, uh, from it with your finger. And that's been a great investment as well. So like a sustainable lint roller kind of system, a debobbler has been great. And my mom taught me at a very young age how to sew back on buttons and stuff. So I have been sewing things back together. I have a sweater from H&M that I always talk about when I talk about garment care and how I like to take care of my clothing. Um, the sweater started to smell really badly after a while because I tend to wear my, wash my clothing on a very low setting with not that much heat because my clothing doesn't really get dirty. It's a bit sweaty, but I don't really get dirt all over myself. So I don't need to like do a lot in terms of like actual cleaning clothes. However, it can mean that some of your sweat can like build up over time. There is bacteria in your sweat. So if you've ever found, especially with workout clothing, that after a while you can't get that smet, sweaty, musty smell out of it, just do a load of laundry with a bit of white vinegar added, added to it and you're fine. The white vinegar will actually kill the bacteria and get rid of any odors or weird smells that it might have. If you use too much, it's going to smell like vinegar, so you don't want that either. So just do a little bit, like I do less than when I use fabric softener. I don't use fabric softener with my clothing at all because anything with elastane in it, fabric softener is a killer for fibers like that. I only use fabric softener for towels and bedding really, and towels not even all the time, just sometimes if I feel they need a refresh. But the only thing I really use my fabric softener for is bedding because I just want my bedding to smell nice. Um, because really essentially fabric softener is no more than deodorant for uh, your washing machine, you could say. It doesn't really do much and it can actually damage clothing, especially if things are like made of silk or if they have elastane in, like I said, fabric softener can really mess with it. So um, that's why I tend to go the white vinegar route if I do feel my clothing need that refresh. So I got rid of the smells from my very beloved H&M sweater that I've had, I think. I already had it a couple of years before I moved to this place and I've been in, in this place for about seven years now. So it's, I think at least 10, maybe 11 or 12 years old and it's still going strong. It's a cotton knit. It got that smelly feature after a while. So I washed it with the white vinegar, vinegar and it was fine. But after just a couple of years of wear, I started to notice that around the collar, it has this like round neck, the knit became undone. 
and I was able to fix it. I was able to pull the threads back into place just using a little bit of thread and it's been fine ever since. So getting a little bit of creative and just being able to use a needle and thread by hand allows you to sew back on buttons, to close holes or to mend seams. I've done it all in my time. Um, I wore a lilac dress in my uh, most recent weekend outfits. After the first time wearing it, there was a rip along the seam on the side and I was able to mend that rip just fine and you can't even see it anymore. Um, I have a vintage blouse like the one I'm wearing today. It's not a fleecy one, but it's this really nice, sort of really soft, viscosey material. And I love buying vintage viscose because it becomes only softer over time, it feels. But it also gets quite thin. So I have one of my favorite, like, 90s inspired blouses that has that very silky, viscose feeling material. But it had a very thin patch on the elbow on this side. And I was wearing it to work one day, and then I was like feeling my elbow in the middle of a meeting. My colleague actually screenshotted it because my face was so funny. And I just felt my elbow sticking through the fabric. I was like, oh no, this is one of my favorites. So what I did is that I sewed the fabric back together. It also had a hole somewhere in the front already when I bought it, which I also sewed back together. And because of the print, you can't really see it. The one, the patch on the elbow, you can really, really see but it is the kind of fabric that I tend to wear more so in the spring summer season, also with the shades it has. And then I tend to wear a lot of my blouses with the sleeves rolled up anyways. So a lot of the times you can't even see it. I just roll up the sleeves. I just choose to wear it in a slightly different way. And this garment that had a huge rip in it, I can still make it work. Uh, and that's definitely how I tend to go about a lot of my clothing. I try to see, can I fix it? Can I then wear it in a slightly different way? Um, I definitely like hacked like sleeves of things and like shortened shorts. Uh, I even like bleached my own pair of shorts years back um, because I really wanted to have one of those studded pairs of uh, shorts that everybody was wearing at the time and I just didn't have the budget. So I completely DIY'd it. I just cropped a pair of trousers I had, made it very fringy, dipped it into a bucket of watered down bleach and like made an ombre effect that way. And then I studded it myself and it was actually really fun. Um, when like certain trousers or something, if they don't really fit me at the top, I've also been able to like put in a different button so I can still wear it that way or I will use like a little button extender as well sometimes. So there are definitely ways in which you can actually still make a lot of your garments work. Um, even if you feel like maybe they have run the course of their life. Um, I do declutter because I do feel that I wanna keep my wardrobe on top of things. So that's really why I declutter. Sometimes I just buy things that after a while I'm like, why did I even buy this? Why is this here? Um, but I definitely always buy with the intention of keeping things in my wardrobe for 10, 15 years, for sure. That's always the intention. Um, and then definitely, I think in the past two to three years, ever since I've been buying more from places like Arquette and Cezanne, and now I've, I've discovered some like uh, more sustainable brands from the UK, like Lucy and Yak. I've just recently discovered Joni clothing. So I'm definitely like spending a bit more on my wardrobe as in like the single pieces I buy. And then I also make want to make sure I make it last. Um, there's still some fast fashion. I still buy from H&M from time to time because I feel they just do really good basics and like a basic like top like I'm wearing today. I'm just wearing a black tank top underneath this flannel shirt today because it, it's June, but over here it feels like it's fall. So I wanted to like cover up a little bit, but still be like, not like in the fall time, I would wear this close, but I felt for right now, wearing it open with a little top underneath can work real, really well. But these kind of tops that, you know, get stained from your deodorant really quickly, like a white t-shirt, a basic white t-shirt, I would never invest in because they're going to get armpit stains anyways. And you can remove those, but after a while, it, be, it gets to a point where you can't remove it. And with a lot of shirts like this, because I tend to tuck them into my jeans, they very often get a little like hole around the navel, which is very difficult to fix as well. But things that are fixable, I fix. I will 
make things work. I keep things around in my wardrobe, even if things don't fit. I know that sometimes like a lot of wardrobe organization people and also fashion people, I feel tend to say things like, oh, if you haven't worn something for six months or a year, that's the time. That's when you know you need to get rid of it. But A, I live in a country with four seasons. Like I mentioned, it's June, but it feels like fall. It's been actual cold and not the kind of weather that we had last year, for instance. Last year it was sweltering hot and you just didn't want to wear any clothes at all uh, in June. And this year it's like pretty cool and I can still wear sweaters. So because of the weather and not knowing what the weather is going to do, I tend to have like pieces that I don't wear very often. Like I have a bunch of really nice summer dresses and when it gets really hot, I wear all of them, but I wear one every single day. Um, and that's how I get the use out of those summer dresses that you saw me when I did my dress declutter, like the strappy ones. That's why I very deliberately don't have too many of them because I know I will only get the use out of it when it's like 25, 30 plus degrees over here. And it's not a work day because I don't tend to wear, wear those kind of things to work. Um, but yeah, I, I tend to sometimes get more use out of things that I buy for like the fall and spring season more so than I do for like true, true winter and true, true summer. So I have a very good transitional wardrobe, I feel. But that does mean that I don't always get to wear my stuff in like a six month period. So for me, using that six month rule isn't very like it just it just doesn't make any sense so i tend to go by two to three years and if i still haven't worn it in two or three years i tend to go like mm, do i still like this is this still right for me however there have been pieces in my wardrobe that i definitely dip my toe in and out of i have this forever 21 cocky skirt that I, I just, I've just fallen back in love with it again. I think I bought it back in 2012. It's been with me for a long time. And I've definitely gone through a period of time where these longer-ish skirts just really weren't my thing. And then I got back into like longer skirts. So I wanted to wear a little bit more again. And then I didn't love the color on me. But then I added some things to my wardrobe again that make me feel like, huh, I think that Forever 21 skirt can be nice with this. So I definitely feel that as my wardrobe changes and as I change and get older, there are definitely things that don't feel right for me anymore, That especially because I'm turning 40 in a couple of weeks. I definitely feel like my tastes have changed a lot and not because I'm like, ooh, that, that's like not appropriate for a 40 year old. I don't think that way at all. But there's definitely things where I'm like, mm, yes, I was wearing that in my late, late 20s and early 30s, but is it still me? And then I feel like very often the answer to that question is no. And those are the things I've really been decluttering in the past couple of years um, and bringing back things into my wardrobe that I feel are a bit more timeless and that I can wear again for like the next decade to come. Um, so that's definitely how I like to take care of my clothing. As I mentioned as well, I'm filming this video because I had this brainwave moment where I was like, I'm going to be shortening that pair of pants myself this afternoon. And that's another thing that I think a lot of people don't take the effort for is to tailor their clothing. I'm petite, I'm five foot one-ish. I never really know for sure. It's one meter and 56 centimeters in the metric system in case you're wondering. So I'm short but I do have a slightly bigger waist and that means that when I buy trousers, they're always going to be too long. And for a while, the cropped trouser was a thing and on me, they were full length and I was really happy. But then we got the longer trouser tr uh, trend again. And so I asked my mom whether she could, she could help me out because she's definitely better at shortening, like making like a tailoring pants than I am because she's been doing it for years. Uh, she would make clothing for me when I was a kid. I still have one of the dresses that she made me um, in my wardrobe, like protected in a little garment bag. Um, but yeah, so she's taught me these things as well. So I've been, I feel very lucky that I've had a mom who's always been like this. And I think that's really helped me into finding like things that I can do with my uh, garments as well and that she can help me out um, because I definitely had a couple of really nice wool trousers. And I was like, I put hemming tape in them at first, but the minute I washed them, the hemming tape would become undone. And it because of the fabric still being there, it became really heavy at the bottom. So I asked my mom, like, can you help me out? Because I had some corduroy trousers and things like these really nice wool, like dress pant kind of things. 
that made me feel really good when I was wearing them, but because they were either a little bit more expensive and the fabric was thicker, I knew that my very basic sewing machine probably couldn't deal with it. Um, and she knew what to do. So I gave her a couple of bits like over the winter time, like, hey, can you, can you do this for me? And she was very kind and did that. So I got help from mom, but this time around I was like, mm, I wanna do this myself as well. I'm not the best sewer, as I said at the start of the video, so I'm not gonna show you because it's gonna be a struggle to get it all set up and ready to go. Um, like sh like cutting a piece off and like like making sure that I know where the hem is gonna go That's the easy bit. It's the sewing machine that still scares me a little bit But because I haven't used it all that much But yeah a couple years ago I asked my parents for my birthday Can you please help me buy a sewing machine because I want to be able to do these like easy fixes myself So that for instance, I have another pair of shorts where the hem became undone and I'm just going to rehem it myself. I will have the, once I have the whole thing set up anyways, I might as well just give it an extra stitch um, because the seam uh, became a bit undone on that. So I'm just going to restitch that as well. I've got some buttons to sew back on. So that's how I like to take care of my clothing. Let me know your tips in a comment down below how you like to take care of your clothing. This was a bit rambly because I didn't really write down any notes beforehand. Um, but yeah, I think that this is definitely a way that I like to go about things and try to get the most use out of my garments as I possibly can. And I hope to inspire you to do the same as well. So thank you so very much for joining me here today. I will be back with a new video next week for sure. So I hope you'd like to stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, if you do our if you do want to see some makeup related content as well, then please head over to my first channel where I post four times a week. I hope to, I hope you have a great day and then I hope to see you in my next one. Bye-bye.